Hey folks, uh, Mr. Math Blog here, and this uh, lesson is on factors and divisibility. Okay, so um, uh, this uh, is the beginning of operations in algebra. Your common core uh, connection is uh, cc.4 oa.4. All right, and so we just want to see is uh, are these numbers factors of other numbers? Okay, so here we go, and this uh, uh, follows lesson five two in the book I'm using. So so use the square tiles to model and record uh, the factors of thirty two. All right, so we're going to make rectangles uh, that have 32 squares in it. So here's one rectangle, 1 by 32. So 1 and 32 are factors of 32, okay? And then um, uh, I can do a 2 by 16. So there's 32 uh, squares right there. Uh, 16 plus 16 is 32. So 2 and 16 are factors. Can you think of another rectangle that you can make uh, to get 32? Uh, let's see, 4 and 8 can, so 4 by 8, so here's 8, plus 8 is 16, plus 8 more is 24, plus 8 more is 32. Okay, can you think of another rectangle that you can get to get 32 in there? I can't, you guys, so the factors of 32 are 1, 32, 2, 16, 4, and 8. All right, I don't know if you'd want to list those in order or not. Let's try a problem here. So Scott is arranging some tiles at the Home and Landscaping Expo. He wants to arrange 32 tiles into a rectangle. Can Scott arrange 30, these 32 tiles into three equal rows without gaps or overlaps? Okay, well we kind of did um, uh, all the rectangles. We try to arrange it so so it's asking uh, to arrange 32 tiles into three equal rows to make a rectangle. Well, we did that earlier, you guys, and these are the only ways I can make a rectangle that have 32 squares in it. So I can't make a rectangle with 32 squares in it with three equal rows. Here's one equal row. Here's two equal rows. Here's four equal rows. I can't get 32 rectangles with uh, three equal rows. So, so when it asks me, uh, a rectangle blank have 32 tiles arranged in three equal rows, a rectangle cannot have 32 tiles that are arranged into three equal rows. I can't do it. Okay, so uh, so if we uh, it, if three is a factor of 32, and so we're going to use division, then the unknown factor with three times whatever it is is a whole number, and we'll find out when we long divide, you guys. It is not a whole number. Watch. Okay, don't give up on yourself on long division, you guys. Start try to get the hang of this, you guys. Uh, I have some high school kids uh, that are great with that, and they're pretty successful in their math classes. And and kids that gave up on it a long time ago, and they just they really uh, never tried. And I trust me, you guys can do this. If you're struggling with long division, hang in there. It'll get a lot easier, you guys. All right? You're just cheating your future if you're not, you guys. I'm just looking ahead for you. I know what's ahead for you. All right, anyways, let's go ahead. So uh, uh, this number divided by 3. So 3 goes into the 10 spot one time. 1 times 3 is 3. And then subtract, and I get 0. Okay, and then we're going to slide this 2 down. So here we go. And then we're going to divide again. Okay, we got to keep going, you guys, because this is in the 10 spot. I still need to divide in this unit spot. So how many times does 3 go into 2? 0 times. So I'm going to put a 0 up there, and then multiply 0 times this 0 times 3 gets me this 0, and then I get a remainder right there. So that remainder tells me that this is not, this quotient is not a whole number. It's 10 with a remainder 2. Okay? So we, um, uh, so the unknown factor in 3 times uh, whatever, 32, is not a whole number, and a rectangle can't uh, have 32 tiles arranged in three different rows. All right, so just remember, a factor of a number divides into a number evenly. If it's a factor, then that means that the quotient is a, uh, is a whole number and the remainder is zero, okay? The key part is, if it's going to be a factor, I'm going to underline this, you guys. If it's a factor, then your remainder is going to be zero, okay? So that's the important part, is the remainder zero? Or can you make a rectangle? If you can make a rectangle, then yes, it is a factor. All right, so explain how the model relates to the quotient and the remainder for 32 divided by 3. All right, well, if I made this model right there, it's asking, can I make a rectangle of 32 squares in it uh, with three equal rows? And I can't. In fact, the closest I can do is 10 by 30. And that only gives me, I'm sorry, yeah, 10 by 3, sorry. And that gets me 30 inside, and then I have a leftover 2 on the outside. See, here's my... Here's my 10 columns by 3 rows right here. 
All right, and then uh, that gets me 30, and I get a little remainder of 2 right there. So we cannot make a rectangle of 3 by anything to get 32. The remainder left over is the 2 squares. So that's how it relates, is that remainder is your 2 squares left over. All right, so explain how you can tell if 4 is a factor of 32. All right, so we, uh, we can uh, see if we can make a rectangular arrangement to get 30 squares with four equal rows, or we can divide 30 div uh, divided by 4 and see if the remainder is 0. Remember, if it's a factor, you guys, then we want the remainder to be 0. So if it's a factor, then we want the remainder to be 0, okay? And if the remainder is not 0, whoops, uh, then it's not a factor. All right. So divisibility rules. A number is divisible by another number if the quotient is a whole number and your remainder is zero. Okay, that's our trick. So here's some divisibility shortcuts, you guys. So here's some numbers. So two is a factor if the number is even. Okay, so we get a remainder of zero if the number is even. Three is a factor is if we add the digits and if the sum of the digits is divisible by three, then three goes into that number. All right. So I can, I can look at a big, long number and just add up the digits and see, does 3 go into the sum of that? And if it does, then 3 goes into that big old number. I won't know how many times, but I'd know it would be in there. Okay, 5 is a factor if the last digit is 0 or 5. Okay, 6 is a factor is if it's an even number, or in other words, if 2 goes into it, and if it's divisible by 3. So if we add up the digits and it's divisible by 3. Okay. And then finally, the last one, I don't have a trick for 7, I don't have a trick for 8, but I do have one for 9. It's kind of like 3. If you add up the, divi the digits and if the sum is divisible by 9, then 9 goes into that number. All right, let's try one. 6. Is 6 a factor of 72? Okay, so think. Uh, if 72 is divisible by 6, then 6 would be a factor. So, so let's go through the process. This says uh, if the number is even. Is 72 even? Yes, okay, so that's part of it. And the second part is this. Uh, is it divisible by 3? So 3 says add up the digits. So we're going to go ahead and add 7 plus 2. That's what's going to go here. 7 plus 2 equals 9. So is this is 9 divisible by 3? Okay, does 3 go into 9? Yes, okay. So since, uh, since it's even and since it's divisible by 3, then that means 6 goes into it. So 72 is divisible by 6 which means 6 is a factor of 72, okay? So, here we go. So we're going to list all the factors of 72 in the table, okay? So, um, uh, so here's my divisibility rules right here that I just did. Now, 1 times 72, so 1 and 72, okay? Now, let's look at 2. Is the number even? Yes, it is, because that last digit is an even number, so 2 is a factor. So how many times does 2 go into that? I did long division over here. Again, don't give up on long division, you guys. It's, it can be your easy friend, you guys. I know you guys are thinking, well, oh, man, Mr. Math Blog's wrong, but no, it's, it, it's really not that bad, you guys. Don't give up on yourself, okay? 2 goes into 7 3 times, and then 3 times 2 is 6, all right? And then 7 minus 6 is this 1. Slid the 2 down. 2 goes into 12 six times, and so we get 12, and we get a remainder of 0. Okay, I knew it would be a remainder of 0 because it was an even number. Okay, so 2 and 36 are factors. All right, is 3, so if I add the digits, the sum of the digits, 7 plus 2 is 9. Since 3 goes into 9, 3 goes into that, and I long divided 3 into that right here 24 times. So 3 and 24 are factors of 72. Okay, 4, there's a kind of a, a sort of a halfway trick on 4. If it's an even number, then half the time 4 goes into it and half the time it doesn't. But if it's odd, 4 doesn't go into it. Since that's even, I'm going to go ahead and long divide 4. And if I get a remainder of 0, then 4 would be a factor. So here it is, 4 long divided. And I divided right here and I got 0. So 4 was a factor. So 4 and 18 are factors. So 4 times 18 equals 32. Okay. All right, again, so the trick is if it's even, half the time 4 goes into it, and half the time 4 wasn't. So if this was, if you got a remainder of 2, let's say, then 4 would not be a factor. It has to be a remainder of 0 to be a factor. Okay, does 5, does 5 go into it? Is the last digit 0 or 5? No, so 5 doesn't go into it. Does 6 go into it? 6 goes into it if 2 goes into it and 3 goes into it. So 6 goes into it because both 2 and 3 go into it. 
So when I long divide that, I got 12. So here's factors of, of 72, 6 and 12. All these are factors of, of 72 also. 72 has lots of factors, okay? I don't know about, I, there's no shortcut for 7 except for long dividing. And since I long divided 7 and I got a remainder, that's 2. It's not 0. 7 is not a factor, okay? Uh, and then try 9, you guys. Um, I don't know a shortcut for 8. So when I try 9, if I add the digits, 7 plus 2 equals 9. Since 9 goes into 9, 9 goes in there 8 times. I think I did 8 uh, into 72 instead of 9 into 72, because 8 times 9 is 72, uh, just because it was in order right there. So there's all the factors of 72 right there, okay? And I use my divisibility tricks right there to do that, okay? So your teacher can go over those tricks again with you guys, so I'll do a little bit more here. So how do we check to see if 72 was a factor? All right, what I did is I just long divided, you guys, and since the remainder was not 0, it was 2, then I knew 7 was not a factor. And how are divisibilities and factors related? Well, when you divide, you guys, if you get a remainder of 0, then that divisor is a factor. If it's not 0, then it's not a factor. Like above, 7 gave me a remainder of 2, which wasn't 0. So it's not a factor, okay? All right, so is 4 a factor of 32? Draw a model. So when you see this, it's going to it's basically asking you, can you make a rectangle uh, of 4 and 32? Well, yeah, I can make it 4 and 4 by 8. So since this is 32 squares right there, then 4 is a is a factor because I can make a rectangle of 4 by 8. Okay? What about 28? Is 4 a factor of 28? So it's asking, can 4 make a rectangle of 28? Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, can, can you make a rectangle with rows of 4? And yeah, it would be 7 on there. All right, how about this? Let's use our divisibility rules. 5 a factor. So 5 says it's the last digit is 0 or 5. Okay, that last digit is 6. So no, 5 is not a factor. That last digit is 5. So yes, 5 is a factor. It just says write yes or no. Okay, that last digit is 2. It's not 0 or 5. So no, 5 is not a factor. That last digit is 0. So yes. So it's going to go no, yes, no, yes. Okay, one more, you guys. Is 9 a factor? Okay, so 9 rules is uh, add up the digits and see if 9 goes into the sum. 5 plus 4 equals 9. 9 goes into 9. Yes. 6 plus 5 equals 11. 9 does not go into 11. No. 7 plus 6 is 13. No. 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9, so that would be yes. Okay, I hope this helps you guys. Take care.